Well, hey guys, and welcome again to Into the Night. So today I'm doing another product review from Eagle Eye Hunting Gear. This is one of their, their aluminium tripod with a ball head. And also they've sent me the, the gun clamp to go on the top. So this one here, they, they sent me out these other little rubber feet things. So you can drill a hole, one there and one here, through there, and it just well, adds a bit of extra spacing in here. You can put it, they do supply another little rubber pad like this to, you can stick on there, but these are supposed to be a bit stronger, a bit better. So I'll put them in there because my guns are, the four ends are pretty narrow in there. So we'll mount it up and I'll show you, the tri get the tripod out and I'll show you what it comes with. So first of all you've got this nice bag but inside the bag here there's another zipper pocket and there's some feet and allen keys and uh, spikes if you want to put spikes in instead of the rubber feet that are on there and some instructions but it's pretty straightforward and so here's your tripod The legs all fold down and they've got these little locks in, in here so you can set it out to different different angles too. So you can sit it down pretty low on the ground if you wanted to and get a lean off off low from kneeling. Oh you put it down. The dogs here eating taking stuff away from me. <laughs> Boots. You silly little puppy. So I think from completely folded, folded down as low as it'll go like that. It's about 59 centimetres from the ground to the top of the ball head or the Arcus Swiss clamp up the top here. And then fully extended with that right up. The legs are folded out. Like so. So that's 169, 164 centimetres to the top of there, and 142 under there. So they sent me out this, the gun clamp, and so it just mounts on the Arca Swiss plate already attached to the bottom. So tighten him up. And you can sit your rifle in the top. Quiet! Right, and then so that goes. Oh, stupid dogs. You're mad. Sit down. You sit down too. <laughs> right, so that's, that goes on there. You can sit your rifle in the top. But also, this other clamp I've got here. I've had for a little while. It'll can fit it on top as well. So then you got the two two points of rest. But I found with the magazines, like in my two D three, they're okay. You can sort of only just get the magazines out of the out of it like that. With my twenty two with the long magazine, it won't fit in there. Yeah, they do make an offset one, but I wanted to try the gun clamp. So I'll just swap that over. Back to the clamp. And there you go. Like so. So it'll just sit in there and you just tighten your clamp up. Like so, it's nearly getting a bit dark for shooting with this scope. So that's a bit too low. Ideally you want to have your your tripod set up so when you're standing there and you bring your gun up, it should be to about there. So you don't want to be bending down, stooping down, you want to just 
be in your comfortable standing position. And it's your most comfortable position to be able to hold, get your best lean. So I've got a target set up down there at 50 metres. So I'm just going to have a couple shots and see how they go. Tighten the ball head up with that one, and the gun will sit there. Now, this one here is a bit higher, so I'll have to drop it down a bit to about there. Alright, we'll have three shots at this. So yeah, I reckon this one is a little bit more stable, but I know, just put the gun down. I know when you're carrying it around, I like to carry it on over my shoulder while I'm walking. And the gun over this shoulder while I'm walking at night and then swipe it over this shoulder. So when you're walking around at night, this thing here sometimes swings around. Or well, with this one it might not be so bad because it's up above of your head. But on, with my narrow tripod I've been using, it used to swing around and hit me in the head. <laughs> But this one here, the tripod is actually a bit lighter than my carbon fibre one, even though this one's aluminium. This one here is a bit skinnier in the legs. Yes, it might not be able to support as much weight as what the other narrow one, but if you're just shooting off it, it doesn't need to support much weight. But I really like the fact that it's having this other clamp on here. It's a lot more compact. I can have it set to the height I want. And it's there, you just drop your rifle in, tighten it up. And when you're not using it, you just throw it over your shoulder and you can walk around and it just sits on your shoulder. You've got two hands free. If you want to, you can pull that leg in and it sits there pretty good. You just pull it down. Put it in, pull your gun off the back, straight in the top. So yeah, it's, I think it, I think it's even, I think it worked out about 340 so grams lighter than the carbon fibre one. So it's only um, just under two kilos, I think, or it was about two, two and a half, something like that. I'll have to put it on the scales and I'll put the weight up on the screen here, but anyway, I've been, overall I'm quite a, quite happy with it you can if you don't if you do want to put a bigger ball head on here this one here is sort of okay you bigger the bigger the ball the more generally the more stable it is I've found but it is a just a normal standard tripod so you can take you can swap swap this out and put whatever ball head you want on it but this one here is pretty sufficient for shooting off it's all you really need and it's a a good stable rest. Just a little bit, it's a lot better than taking a taking the shot off the shoulder and wobbling around and you more time probably nine times out of ten you miss or miss the animal you're shooting at or wound it and it gets away wounded which is not what you want to do. You want to take it out as humanely and quickly as possible. And so this really helps get the job done. So you'll in my future videos you'll be seeing this tripod out with me a fair bit and you'll see how it performs out in the field later on so i'll leave the review at that i think the current price is about 435 dollars for this setup 
with this the gun clamp on the top here. So head over to Eagle Eye Hunting Gear. I'll put a link in the description below. You can go and check them out. But as they've got dealers, or well, most of the main firearms dealers all around the country, stock smart rest gear. So go into your local dealer or head over to the website and check them out. Well, just think, just coming down the track here and on my way back from work before and I'm just shining my little Warrior Mini 3 out the window as I was coming past and picked up a set of eyes. It's only a couple hundred metres from the house so I sort of raced back and grabbed the rifle with the thermal on it <clears throat> and so I've come back down here and I think he's just down here in the tree so I'll quickly I'll take the tripod from Eagle Eye Hunting Gear out and see if we can get a go and find this little kitty. Well, here you go. He's just about a lion. Look at the size of him. I'll put him on the scales and <laughs> nice big tomcat. So, taking him with my 223 and I've got the Pulsar Thermion 2 XP50 Pro on the top and using 55 grain hollow point projectiles. And I'm resting it up on the, the gun up on the Smart Rest tripod from Eagle Eye Hunting Gear. So this is the first kill I've actually got with this tri using this tripod. Um, so yeah, it's an aluminium tripod. And it's a, quite a nice rest. So one little modification I might do. They sent me out these two little um, rubber grips in here, of which I drilled a hole and put them in and installed them. As, as meant to but because the stock tape is down I might try and pack that one out a little bit further so it actually clamps it because it's not it's not gripping on the it's gripping on that one but not really on this one because of the tapered stock so if I put that one in a little bit further it'll grip a lot it should hold it hold it nice and firm anyway also, I've used, got the magazine extensions from Victor Precision. So, yeah, really, really happy with the little setup I've got here. Anyway, I'll go and put him on the scales and scalp him and see what's in his gut. And I'll let you all know what's inside of him. That's here, and I've put a couple of little washers in here, a little rubber, rubber washer and a stainless steel one, just to pack that out so... You can see there, look at down, it's just just packed out a little, that one there is a little bit further that way than this one here. So there you go, I can, I can rock it and it's just moving the hull, flexing the hull out of the tripod, it's not, it's not rocking in that mount, so it's a lot more stable than what it was. So... Just a couple of washers packing that out. If you've got a AR type handguard, like a handguard on the thing, they're usually pretty straight, so you won't need to pack it out with that. But with a most traditional type stocks like this one, um, they may, most of them will taper. So maybe a, just a little modification you have to do. Works really well. Nice, very nice, stable setup. Okay, four point seven five kilograms. Decent size cat. All right, now we'll scalp him and see what's in his gut. Okay, so as gross as this is, I think it's important for people to understand the damage that feral cats in Australia do. Here's just a one one cat, he's probably only 
literally only just been out in the last hour or so. He's probably been sleeping most of the day. He's in the last hour or so, and he's, look, he's got there's one mouse, so that's one good thing he's got for going for him. And well, there's a head, head of a quail. A foot from a there's one, there's a foot from another little. That's not a quail foot. There's a foot from a quail. There's the other leg. There's the claws from another little bird. Not so sure, sure what sort of bird it is. But it's a little like a one that lives in a tree, like a wren, I think. Oh, look, that's at least three birds he's eaten. There's a one, two feet, same. One, another two feet there. And there's another foot. There's nearly the whole bird there. So he's been he caught at least three birds and a mouse in probably the last hour and um, the time is only well it should be only about 6 30 quarter to seven in the evening so the sun's it's well and truly dark now but just think if he's out every night all night catching little birds little native animals little marsupials and whatever else I don't care who you, who you are or what where you come from. Those things are a problem. And there's millions and millions and millions of feral cats in Australia. And there's always going to be crazy people jumping up and down saying, no, don't shoot the cats. They don't do anything wrong. People do more, cause more problems. Yeah, people do cause some problems, but I don't know. You can go and jump in the lake if you and a stick up for these mongrel things. So, anyway, he ate one mouse. It's the only good he's done <laughs> for tonight. So, anyway, saved a few more birds tonight and other little animals. He won't be doing anything again. So I had to show you some gross stuff on here, but I think it's important that people realise the damage that feral cats do here in Australia. No, they're not pets. They're not someone's pets. They're definitely not my pet. My house is the closest house around here. <laughs> and he's definitely not mine because I don't keep cats. But anyway, uh, so you can see what the damage that they do, and that's only in one, a oh, couple of hours in the, in the fir first hours in the evening on one night, so just think about, he might live to be 10, 12 years old if no one touched him, and just think of all the damage he can do in that time, and there's millions and millions of them, so anyway, pleased to get another one down, it's been a while since I got a cat, so anyway, I'll catch you all in the next video, hope you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all in another video soon.